Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I wanted to do some extreme activities today, but the place I usually do extreme sh at has been closed for the rest of the year. I wasn't sure what else to do, so I decided to go on the treadmill, drinking white claw instead of water, and wearing jeans. I know it's more stupid than extreme, but at this point, I don't know what else to do. Pre-hibernation week is the episode where Spongebob and Sandy do extreme sports the week leading up to Sandy's hibernation, but the sports proved to be too much for Spongebob. This episode aired on May 5th, 2001, and is the episode that features the band Pantera as a special musical guest. They supply the heavy metal music that plays during the title card, the sand mountain scenes, extreme jacks, and several other times throughout the episode. And the heavy metal music is very appropriately and unironically named Pre-Hibernation. This is also the first episode to feature Sand Mountain, which has been seen a couple times in the future, as well as some kind of f***ing elephant fish, which was only seen here. Something else I've recently heard about this episode is that Sandy is a little too obnoxious here because of almost all her actions she's done throughout this one. Like forcing Spongebob to do extreme sports with her and forcing the entire town to help her look for Spongebob when she thinks he's gone missing. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Right now, let's watch this episode and check out that awesome free hibernation song. So the episode starts up and Sandy is raking the leaves at her tree dome and Spongebob is trying to help her, but his rake is too small. And this cup isn't big enough to hold water. Sandy tells Spongebob to go do some other chores she has because she will be hibernating the following week. Spongebob is a bit confused as to what she means by the whole process of hibernation and misinterprets a few things. Sandy says she only has a week left before hibernation. With only 168 hours until she falls asleep, she's desperate to get done everything she needs to get done, like burning carbs. Spongebob said he was willing to spend any time he's not working at the Krusty Krab with Sandy. And with that, Sandy says they'll be doing extreme sports for the next 7 days. Don't forget Sandy, he still has to work. Later on, they were at Sand Mountain, and Sandy was absolutely shredding the mountain, sliding down it on fire and changing everybody's appearance. Spongebob then throws away his sandboard and rides his tongue. He then hits the Sandman and says the only thing I ever said in senior year of high school. Life is extreme and you wanna make it! He then falls off the mountain, lands on his feet, and says, Yeah. Later that night, Spongebob was banged up, but Sandy was impressed by how well he was doing all these extreme activities. He then leaves for home very slowly, and when he gets there, he tries to sleep, but Sandy launches him out of his room and into a freezing river. Spongebob asks why she didn't let him sleep, and Sandy says she'll be sleeping all winter long, and that'll be in only 72 hours. The next day, Spongebob and Sandy did more extreme activities like playing extreme jacks. Damn, what I would give to try Extreme Jacks. I was able to find a bowling ball, but the store was out of jacks and all I have are cards. Later on, Sandy knocked Spongebob off the sea needle with a giant ear cleaner and then took him on a tandem ride through the industrial park. After the bike jumped off a ramp, they landed on the ground and Spongebob melted into a puddle. Sandy tried to get him to go fly fishing after that. Spongebob tried to talk to Sandy to tell her that the games were too much for him, but before he could finish, Sandy made them play Find the Hay in the Needle Stack. At this point, Spongebob decided to escape the needle stack and ran away to hide from her. Spongebob ran to hide under Patrick's rock, but he left his pants behind. Sandy saw Spongebob's clothes and thought something bad must have happened to Spongebob since he always pulls his clothes before running around naked. I'm personally more concerned about how Sandy knows that information. Sandy ran to the Krusty Krab and told everybody Spongebob was missing and had them help her search for him. She made them search around all sorts of dangerous places, like sulfur fields, an elephant fish's trunk, the poison sea urchin cove, and a leech farm. Days later, they still haven't found Spongebob and the Bikini Bottomites were getting fed up with trying to look for Spongebob. They started saying that other random fish and objects were Spongebob. I found Square Bob. No! I found Square Bob! They distracted Sandy, escaped, and hid under Patrick's rock. Sandy ran around Bikini Bottom and started taking the houses off the ground, going f***ing insane while looking for Spongebob. The townspeople find Spongebob under Patrick's rock with them and throw him outside to get Sandy's attention to get her to stop destroying Bikini Bottom. Sandy was so relieved to see Spongebob and tried to get him to go atom smashing with her. Spongebob finally got Sandy to listen to him and he admitted that he couldn't handle the games. 
SpongeBob hoped that they would still be friends after he admitted that, but he saw that Sandy had fallen asleep, meaning her hibernation started. SpongeBob felt relieved that she had fallen asleep. Yeah, thank Neptune he won't be able to see her all winter. He fell asleep too. Patrick came up and was surprised that everybody was in his house, and the episode ends. So that was pre-hibernation week, and I love that episode. I watched this episode so much during my final year of high school, especially the first semester of that year. The part where Spongebob hit the Sandman and yelled, Life is extreme and you wanna make it! Somehow stuck with me so much throughout that time, and during a class I had that had roller chairs, I showed up to the classroom early just to goof off before class started by rolling around on that chair before the teacher would show up. It was fun pushing myself on that chair so I would roll along, yelling that quote, and stop by hitting the back door of the classroom. It was worth getting a warning flag over. I swear I finished high school. It was a big classroom and I had the aisle seat, and my friends also found it funny when I was doing that. See? I said it was worth it. If there's anything to take away from that lecture, that scene is my favorite part of this episode. And now that I've shared that story, let's talk more about this episode itself. There are so many amazing jokes and hysterical character lines throughout this episode that I don't know where to start. I guess this time I'll start off with Squidward. I love all of Squidward's scenes in this one, such as when he says Spongebob isn't in his thoughts, when he blows Spongebob's cover, and when he looks so happy when he hears Spongebob's missing. I like the beginning scene at the tree dome where Sandy breaks the leaves into the shape of Texas and how panicked she is when she's trying to get her chores done. I love the running gag of the fish who's seen on a bike holding a lollipop and a paddle ball saying, Uh, I can explain. I love the part with Patrick at the very end, how the fish are saying things like a cereal box or a banana or Spongebob, and the gag with the elephant fish. In addition to the sandboarding, I also like the other extreme sports like the extreme jacks, the part with the giant ear cleaners and the space needle, uh, I mean the sea needle, and the scene with the industrial park. I also like the gag with the drummer playing the rim shot. Fun fact, the drummer in this scene is played by writer and storyboard director Aaron Springer. It's also so awesome hearing the Pantera song in this episode. I also like some detail in this episode, like how Spongebob says both This squirrel's trying to kill me! And Yeah. And he also says those exact lines in episode 22, Muscle Bob Buff Pants from season 1. This squirrel's trying to kill me! Yeah. Additionally, I like the Bikini Bottom Minds themselves in this episode. It's great seeing how they react over time with Spongebob going missing, seeing what happens to them while searching for him, and how they are fed up with Sandy over time. It's also fun to see how batch insane Sandy is in this episode. And that's a good segue to our next point of discussion, Sandy herself. This is a criticism that I never heard too much about, but I know that some fans feel this way, but not too many of them. They feel that Sandy is absolutely selfish in this episode. She does things like use her emotions to get Spongebob to do the extreme sports with her, and then she basically forces him to do all the activities with her, even going as far as to prevent him from sleeping. Even when the activities were too much for him to handle, she refused to let him finish his thoughts the first time he tried to tell her this. Then when she thought Spongebob was missing, she rounded up the entire town to look for him. She also made them look in dangerous places to find Spongebob, like the sulfur fields and the trunk of an elephant fish. She made them look for days, and even went as far as basically destroying Bikini Bottom when looking for him. And when she finally finds him, she does try to make him do another extreme sport, but is hesitant to listen to him. And when he does explain it, she falls asleep. But that part isn't necessarily selfish. She had been going extreme non-stop for basically a week, and since she was supposed to start hibernating at this point, of course she would fall asleep after doing all this. Now sure, I've tried to hibernate myself, but I haven't been able to pull that off, so I don't know much about it myself. But clearly she needed to do a lot of chores before she fell asleep for three months, and the amount of things she needed to do would definitely be stressful. And Spongebob was okay with doing the extreme sports for a while, but it really got out of hand for Spongebob starting with the ride through the industrial park. And when she thought Spongebob was missing, she was right to be concerned, but she definitely took things too far by making the rest of the town search for days on end. After going through all of that, I can definitely see how some people don't like Sandy in this episode, but I think it could have been worse. She doesn't use physical force to make Spongebob do extreme games with her or hold a gun to anybody's head when she tells the talent spoke to help her look for Spongebob. 
And throughout the entire time, she was definitely stressed out about something potentially happening to Spongebob, and people tend not to think rationally and act out when they get stressed. And I think if she did do that shit I mentioned earlier, like use physical force or a gun when talking to the others, that would make her absolutely unlikable in this episode. And as previously stated, I think it could be worse. Like in episode 219, Choir Boys from season 6, when Spongebob intentionally hurts Squidward when Squidward tries to get to his choir practice, or episode 263, One Course Meal from season 7, where Mr. Krabs used Plankton Spear of Whales to torment him. Both of these were basically for no reason at all, but at least Sandy had some kind of motive for making everybody in town help her look for Spongebob. And Sandy would also be a bigger problem in this episode for me personally, if it wasn't so much fun watching her do the extreme games like the sandboarding and riding through the industrial park. Out of all the episodes that show her badass side, I think this one might be my favorite. And that's even more true when you step back and realize that her scientist side is shown more often at this point. So while Sandy's actions may go a little too far in this episode, I don't think it's that bad. There has to be some episodes that show every main character be the main antagonist at some point, and I think it was done fairly well on Sandy in this episode. But despite all that, I still love this episode. There are so many hilarious one-liners from all the characters and awesome music and animation from this episode that it's still so much fun to watch. And while I was hung up on one scene for the longest time, there's still a lot I love about this episode as a whole. Pre-Hibernation Week is a good episode. All the characters are so strong and the heavy metal music used is awesome. While I won't deny that Sandy does go a little too far at times in this episode, it's still fun to watch just for her badass side. And this is a great episode to watch if you want to see the badass side of Sandy. And speaking of extreme, today I learned to not go on a roller chair after coming off the treadmill wearing jeans. 